In the previous lecture, we learned how to calculate the mean for various data structures, including NumPy arrays and Pandas data frames. In this lecture, we will discuss another type of mean, which is the weighted mean or the weighted average. So what is the weighted average and when do we need to use it? The weighted average differs from the symbol average in that it considers the importance of the values in our data. We need to use the weighted average when the values in our dataset are not equally important. For example, when there are values that are less important than others. In such a case, we downgrade the less important values. Suppose that the values come from sensors and that we know that some sensors are less accurate than others. In that case, we downgrade the values from those less accurate sensors by multiplying them by a defined weight. To calculate the weighted average, first we multiply each value by a user-defined weight. Then we divide the sum by the total weights. Here is the mathematical formula. In the numerator, we take the sum of the weights times the values. And in the denominator, we take the sum of all weights. I think this will be clearer with an example. Let's first import NumPy and Pandas like this. Suppose now that we have these two lists. The first list represents the values that we are interested in finding their average. Suppose that the first three values came from less accurate sensors. So we want to downgrade them by giving them a lower weight than the last two values. So we create a second list here which represents the weights for these values. Let's first calculate the simple mean for the list by using the function mean like this. As you see, the symbol average is around 75. Now, if we take into account the fact that some sensors are less accurate, then we want to calculate the weighted average. There is a special numby function that can be used to calculate the weighted average, which is called np.average. We can use it like this. For this function, we pass two arguments. The first one here is the data, and the second argument is the weights, where we pass the list of the weights, which represent here in our example the sensor's weights. Notice that the function calculated the weighted average as 67, which is different from the simple average that we have just calculated previously. If we are right about the accuracy of our sensors, then the weighted average is more accurate in this case than the simple average. I want now to present another real-life example of the weighted average that is commonly used in financial analysis to calculate the return on investment in the stock market and to assess the performance of an investment portfolio. Let's first import a stock investment dataset from a CSV file into a pandas data frame using the function read underscore CSV like this. In the first column, we have the name of the stock. In the second column, we have the amount of money invested in each stock. And in the third column, we have the return percentage for each stock. If you calculate your average return by taking the average of the third column, you will have this average return. However, it would be misleading to say that our average return is 18% because you didn't take into account that you invested different amounts of money in each stock. The best way to calculate the weighted return is by using the amount of invested money in the second column as the weights. So to calculate the weighted return percentage, we use the numby function average like this. Notice that we passed for the first argument the return percentage, and for the second argument we passed the weights 
which are represented by the amount of money invested in each stock. And the output is 13.9, which is the weighted return percentage for your portfolio. With this, we come to the end of this lecture. In the next lecture, we are going to learn another measure of central tendency, which is the median. Thanks for watching and see you there.